In this video, we're going to explore Pai. This is the gem of Northern Thailand and it's a video a lot of you have been waiting for. So many of you have written in saying, Chris, go show us Pai, my favorite place in all of Thailand. This place is magical. If you've never been here, then get ready to be wowed. I'm gonna show you the best things to do in the morning, in the afternoon, the best places to eat, the best things to do at night, and then I'm gonna end the video by touring you through perhaps the best Airbnb in all of Pai. Let's get ready to do this. I'm excited because this is Pai. So let's get into some restaurant recommendations. Meal number one, this place called the Lemon Time Cafe. It's always packed, so I'm gonna give you a little tip. You wanna walk all the way around down the main street and then enter in and go to what's called the Lemon Time Backyard. And you could probably find a seat in there. This place is a really nice little funky place and they serve up all kinds of breakfast. The tiramisu latte is highly recommended, so you might wanna check that out. We got some avocado toast, we got some cheesy eggs, and we got a shashuka. This place is worth checking out. To get to this next spot, you gotta come through and down this dusty tunnel. That lady's been sweeping there. This is about nine kilometers outside a pie and it's called the Mapang waterfall it's probably the most visited waterfall in Pai it's got multiple levels you can climb all the way up to the top I see Haley's made it up there Haley you're a go-getter it's a great spot for people to lounge and there's like a natural slide where the rocks get wet where you can slide and lounge right in the lagoons there's a few different levels here. So you could go all the way down here and there's more lagoons and lookouts down there. You can walk to the top. I would say it's worth a visit. It does cost a hundred baht per person to get in here. We just wanted to stop by here and uh, check it out, show you guys what it's like. All right, I've walked back up the tube now I'm starting to get hungry. Let's see what they got to eat here in Pai. One of my favorite things about being up here in Pai is finding little breakfast and brunch spots just like this. This place is called Carrot on the Moon and it's tucked away. It's, it's a beautiful little spot, but we're not right in Central Pie. We're just a, a few minutes on the outskirts. You might not be able to find this place. Check it out. It's like beside an industrial building. And that's why I made my app, Teeny. It's for Apple or Android. It's got hundreds of my favorite spots all over Thailand. So search that and check that out. As far as this place goes, it's delicious. It's fresh. They have amazing breakfast stuff and they even have homemade pasta we got some cheesy scrambled eggs we also got another avocado toast with a poached egg and a nice salad and we got some homemade scones for takeaway this place is famous for homemade baked goods and the quality of the food and the prices are good our entire breakfast for four cost about 940 baht decent prices great quality and pie, it's just, this place is good for the soul. Let's see what else is out there. How's the water? Warm and nice. We're at the Sai and Gam Hot Springs. Cost 200 baht per person to get in here. How much for a tie? 20 baht. And that brings up the age old debate. <laughs> about whether or not dual pricing for foreigners and ties is a good thing. I'm all for it. So we like to welcome any tie in here to come in for 20 baht. We're happy to pay our 200 baht. Haley, it's time to derobe and get in these hot springs. Sure. We got a special guest with us in this trip here. What do you think of this? 
I think, uh, I'm hoping I go home looking about 30 years younger after this, I can tell you. This is what I call a rejuvenation. The water is crystal clear. I'm just balanced on a little stone here and living the life. Yeah, look at that. That is underwater. Man, the water is crystal clear. Holy cow. So there's several hot springs in the Pi area. The most famous one is actually just in a hotel resort, and that's the one that a lot of people go to. But it's kind of carved in, looks like a swimming pool. It's really man-made. This one we chose because it, it's more natural. And the pools here aren't quite as hot. They're about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, but that's plenty hot enough for me to beat the uh, cool pie morning air. This hot spring is the one that I would recommend that you come and check out. It's about 20 kilometers outside of Pai, so it's a, just a nice half hour drive as you head towards Mei Hong Sun. Come and float in Sangnam Hot Springs. This hot spring is terraced, and each new terrace gets just a little bit warmer. So definitely make sure you go all the way to the back up there and experience the hottest that uh, this Sangam hot spring will give you. Just before I take you to the next spot, I wanna give you a huge tip if you're coming to this hot springs. Do yourself a favor and come here early. There's two reasons for it. Number one, the buses with lots of people start showing up about 10. It's only nine o'clock and we had this place almost to ourselves. And reason number two, just as we're leaving, there's no more mist on the water. You gotta come and see the morning mist. Now, off to the next spot. So we made it out here to what's known as the Bamboo Bridge of Pai. 30 baht each to enter. That's a great deal. It's about 15 minutes on the outskirts of town. It's a bit of a steep, rough road up. Most people are taking motorbikes. This place is gorgeous, but the best time of year to come to Pai is probably November because the rainy season's over, the cool weather has started, but everything is super lush and green. But no matter what season you come, I definitely recommend coming and checking out this bamboo bridge. This place is all about the walk on the bamboo bridge. It's uh, several hundred meters, maybe upwards of a kilometer. I'm only about halfway. We've been surrounded by some nice muddy guests here. So the final stop here at the bamboo bridge is this pagoda. This shrine of some sort. I'm not sure exactly why it exists. There's a sculpture in the center with some ornaments in there. Definitely something Buddhist. If anyone out there knows, drop a comment below. But I'm gonna use it as an excuse to tell you guys how thankful I am that I've spent the last couple of months here in Thailand with my parents. It's been amazing. Shout out to my parents. I just want you guys to reflect on something that you might be thankful for as I finish off this segment here at the Bamboo Bridge, a place you gotta check out. She told me she work in the morning, I started to laugh. So that place behind me is called Two Huts, and it is one of the most famous places in all of Pai to uh, watch the sunset. But as, but as I enter this sea of motorbikes, oh really? Cheers, brother. Meeting subscribers at Two Huts. Look at all these motorbikes. Sunset is prime time out here. So let me just show you what it's like in there. This place is up on a ridge overlooking an incredibly beautiful high valley. And it's a place that you gotta check out. You can come for a drink, you can come to eat, but come and stake out your place a little bit early because it's hard to find a table in there. We managed to get a table and get dinner. Let me show you. Little Mr. Pad Krapow with a Kai Dao. 
check out this setting. And not a word, I was alone in the desert. So I let the fire, this it is good, no angel. Okay, so we're right beside the Kuncha marijuana stand, just as Walking Street bows around. Behind me back there is the Pie Village uh, Boutique Resort, but behind me here is a place that we've been wanting to try for a while. This is called the Witching Well. Uh, and it's the most famous Italian restaurant here in Pai. We've been eating mostly local Thai food this week, but my mom and dad really wanted a little taste of Italy, and this place does the trick. Make sure that you come in here, and a little tip for you, they have, I think it's a pumpkin penne with a Thai-infused curry sauce. That is to die for. I had the lasagna, Haley had the cheese plate, my dad had the uh, salmon with cream sauce. I'm gonna go back in and finish. And then as promised, I'm gonna give you a tour of Utopia, the place that I'm staying. Nighttime now in Pai and Haley. What does everyone in Pai do at nighttime? They go to walking street every night in Pai. Yeah, and we're gonna walk down there and we're gonna show you what it's like. But Haley's all hippied out here. Yeah, don't worry, be hippie. Oh yes. Shout out to Jeff and Nui. Pai Toronto, best Thai food in mm -hmm. the whole city. And uh, it's inspired by yep. this very walking street. So Jeff and Nui and everyone else who loves pie, this little segment's for you. Let's go check it out. It says banana porridge. How much? 20 baht and it's a lot. It's like a shredded coconut and then banana. Feels like more like a porched or candied banana. And I'm gonna just dig in. Oh, it's a very dense texture. been busy up here in Pai, visiting all those beautiful spots, enjoying nature and relaxing. Now, as promised, I'm going to tour you through this Airbnb that we're staying in. This place is ridiculous. So let's start by touring you through the actual accommodations, where you lay your head. Walk over this little bridge. This is seating zone number one of many. We got my parents here, made famous from the street food video. Oh. They're enjoying their newfound fame. Oh, we sure oh. are. We're just sitting here having a great little visit. This is a two-story house. So the main floor, nice little living room, kitchen table over there, solid little kitchen for those of you that like to cook on your own. One bedroom right on the main floor. And here's the main bathroom. Nice shower tub, full washing machine. They also have a separate shower stall, and this walks right back into the master bedroom so that you can access the uh, the main level washroom. Now let's check out the upstairs. And up here, second bedroom, little seating zone, got a little desk there to work at. Both areas have a nice TV, Netflix and everything. And then here's the second bathroom. And they got this nice little patio, couple of seats. This is just right off the bedroom number two. We're up on the second floor, up in the tree tops. And uh, now it's time to take you through the, the rest of the grounds because this is where this place gets really unique. And that's the thing about this place. They have so many of these little seating areas. My mom loves sitting where you saw her there, just fiddling away with her iPad and enjoying time. My dad loves to sit over at the pool area. Nice cloth hammocks you can enjoy. And I don't know if you can hear yet, but there's the sound of running water coming from my favorite area. Just beside this beautiful creek, there's lounge chairs. There's a little gazebo up here. There's a bunch of what we call in Canada Muskoka chairs. 
think in the northeastern U.S. they might be Adirondack chairs. All in a lush tropical setting. I love hanging out there, catching up on emails, listening to the sounds in nature. And then it all loops out and around back to the running water. The name of the place is actually called Utopi, which is a play on the word utopia. And it's the perfect name because as you wander through, you're surrounded by giant boulders, lush green. If you came here at the tail end of rainy season, I would imagine the landscaping here would be absolutely mind blowing. Now, let me just take you through this zone and I'll show you the, the little massage hut. And Haley told me this was the best massage that she's ever had since she's been in Thailand. This little bonus section, look at this, a big stone bar, a little outdoor kitchen, and they even have an espresso maker. And they got a swimming pool. It's a little too cold this time of year for me to go swimming. They got a band shell over here, so I guess sometimes they come in and play live music. This is perhaps the most bohemian place to chill in the whole property. But there's so many little places to enjoy here. It's like no Airbnb that I've ever stayed at. I'm gonna leave a link for you guys so that when you come up to Pi, you can book this place yourself. If it's available, consider yourself lucky. And the best advice I can give you is to don't just spend all your time down there on Walking Street and in the weed shops. Get outside the town. There's so much to explore up here. It's incredible. And for those of you out there that are planning a trip to Thailand or dreaming about getting over here, check out rwfutours.com. I got three incredible one-week itineraries just waiting for you. Get the hell over to Thailand already, would ya?